Welcome back to the Sturgeon Companion Mercenaries, you beautiful people. And as we said at the end of last episode, we will be taking Omafard Castle in uh, this episode. So we get to start off with a, a nice siege, thankfully. Now there are a couple Valandian lords around, but right now, with the amount of them that we've killed and the amount of armies we've destroyed, I don't think they're really going to be able to muster much that is going to be much of a threat to be able to drive us off this castle. And if they do manage to get us off the castle, well, all points considered, we can just go and ambush the army or the lords individually and then just start lopping off their heads, which means there will be less of them for us to fight. Which, to me, sounds pretty good, since there's a whole plan at the moment, is just killing all of the lords. Don't know why, but it just seems like a good strategy. And this castle looks like it's going to be somewhat difficult to attack. Ladders on that side, and it looks like ladders in the back there. And I tell you what, this is basically just that wooden castle, but reskinned. Absolutely fine with that. Now, standard procedure for us run around to the side, try to get up the ladders, and stab some things in the face, and try to create a breach for our infantry to come in and just start shredding and yeah ladder's just here nice and simple doesn't seem to be too many defenders see you later buddy the horse should be fine there i reckon and yeah that mighty blow perk making a massive difference we just got hit for 25 and can hardly notice the amount of damage we've taken and right okay yeah so they the reason all those archers are showing up is because they are the archers that were put into the infantry and yeah, it just seems like more of them are showing up than their actual troops. Not too mad about that. Not going to be the best breaching force. But if they can get up here, they can start shooting everyone that's down below or off to the sides. And just causing a whole bunch of issues. Now talking about issues. Two-handed axes. Why Why you no hit? Ah, oh, fine. Oh wait, no, that's wrong. Shield. Shield. An axe. Fine, we'll go this way. <laughs> that nearly went really wrong right at the start. I'm glad we've got like an insane amount of HP now. And we also got some really good armor. Yeah, so those archers, once they get bored of fighting things up here, all they're going to do is just start shooting those guys down there. Which works out pretty well for us. We'll go clear the tower. I imagine it's probably already been done by our archers on the ground because... We have some fantastic archers. Like, ridiculous archers. So, Batanian Feints, awesome archers, right? Absolutely amazing. We literally can't floor them. Floor them? Something like that. <laughs> um, in close combat, beasts with two handed weapons. At ranged, insane. Really good armor as well. And yet, yeah, now the archers are in here, and they can just shoot in on the groups. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. And we didn't even need to break the gatehouse this time. We just opened it. So see, the battering ram never even showed up. Just opened it, managed to secure it. And then our guys just get a rain absolute hell down on them. And let's go join in the melee as well. Maybe with the two-handed axe instead of the one-handed one. Oh, oh, that's nice. You guys trying to stop us coming in? Not happening. Come on. Do you like uh, the reach on this? Like, you can almost hit things behind you with this axe, which is <laughs> super good. And so long as no one blocks, it just cleaves. I probably should have gone for the shield breaker part. I think that probably would have worked best, and as we are using, like, mainly axes, and axes are already good against shields. But I think because of that, we chose the extra attack speed. And it also gives a decent perk to your troops. And a lot of what we're doing at the moment is actually just trying to get perks that make our troops better. Because obviously if your troops are better, they're more likely to level up into companions. Because of the uh, Distinguished Service Squad. Which is decent for us. And I'm going to say, this is ours and Tara just gained a level. Sturgeon Champion with 7 kills. Pretty nice. No point giving him any horse riding because he's already a beast at it. So you might as well make him quicker. And only 31 knocked out this time. 
which is actually mental. Nobody died. A few kills on our companions. Yeah, truthfully, no one done exceptional. Couple sevens and I think one eight. Everyone else either got like one or two. But then I guess like it was only a small garrison anyway, and we just like punched through them super quick. So well, they didn't really have time to kill more than one person at a time. We take all the prisoners, all of loot sars because well we got no one to give it to. Ah, there we go. Look, that's another horse. Right there. Nashawari, I guess. Nahasawi, I guess might be it. So speed 68, maneuverability 72. Charge damage isn't as good as ours. And hit points 225. That horse is actually a beast. But then the amount of times that this one would have died, Kamzen, from <laughs> us just neglecting it. But then maybe the speed keeps it alive. To be fair, this is a good enough horse as it is. So we're going to lock this in. And then give that to somebody else. And hope they don't get it killed, I guess. And it looks like we're just bounced from one siege straight into the next. So Drapping Castle doesn't have too much in the world defenders. 316. 258 of them are militia. Which obviously for us is a good thing. And I'm not too sure how much or not. But I'm not too sure what infantry makes up this 58. But then again, I don't really care. I don't think there's 58 of any one troop that can pose that much of a threat to us. Now, what we can want, well, what we can want to do, what we can do if we want to be sneaky and also grind up our engineering. Oh, there is an army coming in. 755. Yeah, do you know what? I will give that to them. We cannot take that. Now the question is, do we become a vassal so that we can start a war with the Kuze? Which obviously would be quite a lot of fun. Or do we break away from the Sturgeons? They are very powerful. They've got like a force of like 9,000 now, which is insane. The only other people that can like even come close is 7,000 and that's on the Western Empire. Kuze have about 5,000. And we have... 204 so yeah it'll be like David versus Goliath but I don't think we would need that many battles for the tables to start turning and such and we also have a bunch of our companions set up so that we can create some very very powerful lords so we've got people with a lot of medical skill, so that means they won't lose troops as much. We then also have a bunch of people that are trained up to be engineers, so then they'd have the engineers, and then I can quite easily train up like some stewards as well. And then all of a sudden, we'd have four or five other lords running around with us, well, they'd be our companions, and each one of them would have like an extra like three or four people in their group with them, and they would be formidable. I'm thinking maybe, maybe that's what we do, maybe we break away from Sturgia. Keep with the Sturgeon theme, but right now, all this is going to be is rinse and repeat. And so far, it doesn't seem that anyone really is is looking to try to take territory back because, well, we've just taken so much of it that we're continuously on the offensive. And we haven't really had much of a chance to try out our defensive force. And at Clan Tier number 5, I think it is time... For us to stretch our wings. Have one last little look around to try and get some decent kit. Because this is going to be pretty much the last chance we get. Because everyone's going to turn on us. And then start a, a proper war. So just scouting out the Kuzay territory. And we found Baltakahand only has 325 defenders. And 22 Kuzay marksmen. And 11 Kuzay horse archer uh yeah they got some decent stuff in there actually but i reckon that we are going to be able to take that and there isn't there are a few lords around but nothing crazy oh actually this is a uh, 334 i reckon we go in take the 334 out because there's another like three four lords up in this area 
And with that, their actual like ability to attack the castle is going to be super limited. So I'm Yuri Ironside, rah, rah, rah. I'm here to deliver my demands. What do you want? Surrender or die? Are you mad? I'm not your enemy. <laughs> yeah. Now we're at war with the Kuze. And obviously this is something that we wanted for quite a while. Was hoping that by being mercenaries of Sturgia, we'll be able to fight the Kuze. But I just don't think... The Sturgians are quite warlike enough at the moment. Well, even though they are pretty warlike, they've basically controlled like most of the map for a decent amount of time. But we want to break out on our own so that we can actually have a few more defensive sieges. Because, well, this is what it's going to be for a while. And this is such a different map style to what we're used to. Where are... Where's the snow? Where's... All the cover? Yeah, we're fighting on this step. And it looks like this is going to be brutal. Infantry! Form a shield wall! Infantry! So horses are going to have Horsemen, to go in. Are they going to do much? Probably not against Kuze horsemen. But what we can do is if we can move quick enough, we can go up to here. We would be then anchored against the rock face, which is going to give them a very bad time on the horses trying to get to us. Not that we have the best field of fire from here, but then the other side is nor will they be able to shoot us super well. And the last of the archers in. So already lost one of our fancy horsemen. I can't press F9 to make our infantry move faster because that ends my recording. But our horse is buying us a lot of time, thankfully. And well... Everyone knows horse archers, and the horse archers will come to us. And as soon as they start coming this way, well, they can't get around us, so they can only really fight us on one side. Our shields will be in place, so their arrows aren't going to work too well. Skirmishers, well, I wouldn't really call them skirmishers, but we're treating them like skirmishers in with ye old infantry. So we've got our archers that are going to be able to fire back and then our archers within the infantry formation are going to be able to fire back as well. Which I think is going to work out quite well against the Guzay. Running out and charging at them probably won't work too well. So it seems now our horses have been dealt with. <laughs> um, so we've gone in circle formation. Archers are going to go hopefully into the middle or charge out. And we also need to tell the archers in the infantry to start firing as well because we told them all to hold fire because, well, the enemies weren't really coming close enough for us to be, effect to be able to effectively shoot them. And you guys being in a circle wall doesn't work too well if you continuously keep moving and then end up outside it. To be fair, our archers are good enough. <laughs> The horse archers really don't really stand too much of a chance. I mean, shame we lost all the heavy horse, but details. And their army's slowly coming in towards us. Do you know what? It isn't that big of a force. Infantry. Now, that might be famous last words, but I reckon line formation. back into land, line formation. And then we just charge. And then... Actually, everyone. Everyone just charge. All horses wiped out now. Whether or not they're actually dead, I don't think. Some of them are out, that is for sure. But we might have lost like two or three. Which I think is fair enough. And... Yeah, we can get onto their horse quite happily. To be fair, we have fought some pretty large horse armies so far. I was just thinking that the horse archers were going to be a lot more dangerous than they were. But definitely Kuze infantry. Not super dangerous. Might have uh, over-prepared and got a bit too psyched for how dangerous the Kuze were going to be. And yeah, I think if we had infantry going in with the horse... <laughs> it just got in the face by an axe. Yeah, we wouldn't have had as much to worry about. And... Finally, one of those explodey boys got something. Come on. You need to die. And I don't have high expectations for the Kuzate to actually be that amazing. 
and attacking the siege. Defending the siege just with sheer amount of bowmen and like the quality of the bowmen, yeah, they'll probably be quite dangerous. But I don't think them actually attacking us is going to be that much of a worry. So yeah, we lost three of our heavy horse. Not too much of an issue. We've got a whole bunch of people coming in behind this. You're my prisoner. We need your head. And as we are going into a castle, well, into a city, let's just take all the prisoners. That won't really make a massive difference to us. What have we got? We've got some step horses, which are nice. And as far as this loot goes, all we want is the food. And then everything else can go to the infantry to try and level them up. And the first of many Kuzate heads. Whilst going for the siege, we realise there is a crazy amount of Kuzate lords around. Now, we can take 100, 200 fairly happily, but once the Kuzate actually start getting a whole bunch of horse, thinking that horse is going to scale in power exceptionally well. Now, we got a decent amount of troops, and we had some very good archers. But once that horse can start getting in and start getting into the archer ranks and our fanes stop shooting, I don't think our army's going to be quite as effective. So our idea is going to be, let's try to kill off a bunch of the lords. Then once we get a bit of breathing room or they get distracted by another war, we go in and we snag that castle. Well, the town. We definitely want a town because the town's going to be easier to hold. Um, against what we know is going to be a insane amount of Kuzate Lords trying to take it back. And I think the Kuzate power is about 5,000 at the moment, so they've probably got 2,000 odd troops that they can call to arms at the moment. And then what, like 2,000 or 3,000 in castles and garrisons? We can take castles and garrisons from the Kuzate all day. That's not going to be an issue. Fighting on open battle against that many is going to be a bit of an issue. Now, we just need to go in, start disrupting things, use our heavy horse to break up with their horse and their formations, and then go in and kill them. Hopefully get them tied into combat, and then when our horses come around, they are... Our horses? Our infantry comes around. They are going to fall super quick. Their horse is good because it's mobile. Their horse isn't good because it's a good front line. And their infantry also not super bad, just kind of sucks. <laughs> um, in the way that Sturgeon Archers are really bad, uh, Kuze infantry isn't great. Not to be underestimated. Like, that would be exceptionally foolish, but their points basically have all gone into horses. Ours, on the other hand, is a lot of heavy infantry that is good at a variety of tasks. And as we're focusing into getting the spearmen, well, I'm hoping that they are going to be able to start doing a number on the horse charges, which we know are coming. Kind of a thing against playing with the Guzet, or playing against the Guzet, more importantly. But with the infantry getting in on their infantry, that's over, the horse is running out of rooms to manoeuvre, our archers are in close enough and there isn't that many of them that just the focus fire is going to bring them down. And yeah, fairly straightforward battle for us. Wondering what happens when we get into beef with the Sturgeons because we need to go back to Sturgia to get more troops that we can end up getting more spearmen and more horses. Then we also need to go to Batania for their longbowmen. Don't you worry too much about the Batanians because I doubt we're going to get into beef with them. We will get into beef with Sturgia because we're going to be sharing the border with them soon enough. And obviously we're already at beef with the Kuzate because, well, we've already killed one of their lords and started a war against them. But no losses this time around, which is decent. A war of attrition is a war that we're definitely going to lose. And you are my prisoner. But they do have some horse... No, 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 we're not going to take that horse. Though I am tempted. I probably should have leveled that one matey up first. Can we go back to it? No. We'll take their step horses, we'll take their weapons, and then everything else other than the food will go to infantry experience, which yet again means a whole bunch more things leveled up for us. Thankfully, somehow, 
don't quite know, but I imagine it is a perk that we have. We are a lot quicker than the Kuze in the trees. So that means if we're getting chased, we can always run into the trees, which is going to be good for us. But it also means if we're chasing down a Kuzate Lord, all we need to do is get them into the trees once again. And yeah, quick auto resolve on that, just because they had a very small force. No point going in and fighting that if the chances are we're going to lose less <laughs> um, through not going in, which is weird. Normally auto resolve works the other way, but sometimes... Well, especially when you have companions, because the companions take the damage over your units most of the time. And you, sir, are dead. And you're dead. One more with a quick auto-resolve. Yeah, just get them in the forests. And the Kuzate move super slowly. I think this is, what, the fifth Kuzate Lord? Systematic elimination. I think, hopefully, we can cause enough damage before the main army comes up. That we should be in a good situation to try and take a town. Right, giving up on the town idea. <laughs> there is just way too many Kuzay around there. And they're not big groups. They're only like 80 or 90. Like this one's 51. That's 110. But it doesn't take long for them to start adding up to a point where we cannot fight them. And they're also because they're pretty much all horse like based. They are far too quick for us to catch. And they're also smaller than us. So it's just we go chase them, they run away, they come back, and then we chase them again. Now 200. We can take 200. All we need is this baton ram, and this siege is as good as ours. And that 38 has gone off. Another 34 come this way, so we're still sitting at 200 odd coming in against us. If they all come in at the same time. But, Baton Ram set, they got, what, two Mangladels set? I like those odds. Let's go in. 176 versus our Siege Breaker army. So we managed to pick up, like, another one of those banners. And I think they look super, super smart. Now, we do need to get in close before, I don't know, I guess the Mangladels might get a lucky shot and then take out one of the baron rams or well, the only baron ram i guess or hits a whole section of our troops because that would be pretty brutal i'm fairly sure if i can get up this ladder that we would be able to take them from outside the castle just with the amount of archers and stuff we've got but then that is not like really a risk that we want to take and against that many infantry i am not getting over that wall so if we stay here aggro these guys onto us for a while and then hopefully our guys can breach. We've got, what, looks like 3-4 over the wall. Heavy axes coming in. And there's our... There's our breach. We're in. Our shield nearly fell as well. That would have been problematic. But I'm just going to say... Their castles look like they're going to be nightmares to hold. So maybe actually... Taking that city is going to be brutal. <laughs> like, not taking it, just holding it. I mean, because if all the castles are like this, as soon as you have, like, anyone on the walls, yeah, you're in. And we got someone trying to open the gatehouse for us. Very nice. Just getting as much damage as we can. I'm not actually sure what our athletics is. It might actually be 230 now. Probably not too far off on the old axe as well means we just need to get one handed and then a bunch more infantry packs and you guys don't get close that door now this is what i mean right so you can open this door but there's normally like a plank of wood in the middle i reckon if you hit that plank of wood that should stop them from being able to close it again and that for me would be like really good same as like taking out the siege engines like when you're hitting the mangladels and that they take forever to take down and none of your units do it so you have to do it yourself i think you should be able to go up and just hit a certain part and then that breaks it. But in a point where archers can't get it, just to balance it, that'd be pretty sweet. So, the beginning of our kingdom with our first castle. In the time that it took us to go up the hill to buy some, buy some more recruits so we could put them in the castle so we'd actually have some defense, this silly sausage decided to go and besiege it. And he did not run away when we came in. 
Yeah, again, we don't need to fight him. He's only got 58. We're not going to lose anyone. And we even got a level up out of it. So that's another head that we're going to be able to take. A few more prisoners, which, thank you very much, we will have. Got no new troops as such, because everyone's already max tier. But we'll take all of your loot nonetheless. And now, is a matter of going into the castle. Waiting here some time until we see a big army come in. And then figure out if we can hold it or not. And then possibly use it as a distraction to leave and take someone else's castle. And before we forget, we've got to chop his head off. Don't want him getting another army to try and fight us. Well, I guess we know uh, if they're showing up or not. 679 against our 200. Odds are definitely in their favour. But if we can take out that battering ram, which we might be able to do because we do have some Mangladels coming in. Which are always very, very good at taking out siege engines. They probably come in with a siege tower maybe and a battering ram. They are under no rush to break in. We have more than enough food. We have 160 days worth of food. And we have 25 days worth of wages. So yeah, they go in siege tower and battering ram. I'm throwing out there. I think we're going to be good. Their archers are, yeah, going to be terrifying and deadly. But I reckon we got this. I do reckon we've got this. Things that we know, they are going to have a lot of archers. A massive amount of archers. Now, we've got Batanian Fanes, but we don't have that many Batanian Fanes. We also know a lot of our guys can take eight by themselves, which obviously is a very respectable amount. And then... I guess we have a lot of archers, which is going to be the main thing. If our archer... Yeah, Brucey the Bowman. First kill off already. Yeah, we just got to find where they're going to come up on the ladders and then hold those locations. And ideally, if I could actually use... Ooh, that was close. If we can take the Baton Ram, we're good. Kind of wish I had a bow right now. One down. That's two down. At this rate, we're probably good. Baton Ram did get hit, though. There's only going to take, like, a couple more hits, and then that Baton Ram's out. And then we have this. Sea Shower, yeah, it's going to be annoying, but it's not the end of the world. And they are definitely taking more losses than us. We're going to be far better in close combat than they are. And their main advantage is their numbers. Okay, Baton Ram's down. Okay. Only thing now we need to worry about is that Siege Tower. But then the Mangladels are going to start shooting at that next. If the Siege Tower goes down, they have to use ladders. If they use ladders, we just hold the wall. We don't need to worry, really, uh, about the gatehouse. They might try to get in through there, but unlikely. Now, what can we do? Instead of just stood here twiddling our thumbs waiting for something to come and try to kill us. I think we take the Mangladel and then try... <laughs> try to hit that siege tower. Okay, let's see if we can aim this. We good? Okay, we're just in front of it. Not even sure how you meant to aim this thing. <laughs> Trying to zoom in doesn't really help. Anyone going to load me up? Someone load me up before the siege tower gets in. Ah, Muppets. Now, I did hear a sneaky trick that you can do. Are we saying that's it? Okay, we hit some of it. Is you can literally pick up these rocks and drop them. And I guess if we drop them... Okay, anyone going to reload it? No. Uh, why are we reloading it? I am your king. I expect you to reload it. Fine. 
but I'm shooting it as well. Move out of my way. Ah, oh, Steve Shower's well gone. That's not. Wow. Um. So that happened. <laughs> That was a lot of things died. Yeah, and the only way they can get up now is on this side. Where we have a lot of infantry which are getting forced off the wall. That could be problematic. I actually tell you what. Sorry, this is commandeering this. When move, there we go, cool. And uh, we are gonna go shoot this way. Can we turn this way enough for it to work? No. Boring. Okay, what I am going to do is pick these up and see if I can throw them. Okay, well, we seem to be winning despite jumping off the wall. We should be, like, jumping us into our deaths. I mean, I'm, I'm not liking our odds if we try to fight this way for particularly long. But it's working. I guess those breacher axes are doing their job because where it's so close, their longer-range weapons can't actually hit in. And so then, well, our axes can. Okay. Well, I think a few more sieges like this. And our level ups are going to be mental. Now, people are obviously going to get hurt jumping off the walls. And that's not a... Uh, sustainable strategy is, is how I'm going to describe that. So we're going to pull the archers back into this section. They're already on scattered and then put them on F6. But what I am going to do... Okay, all horse is done. Okay, that's a different set of footmen. Which is everyone here. Obviously we need them here to fight the ladders. But then we also really don't want them jumping off the ladders. Because that is like super bad for you. <laughs> like breaking your legs. And yeah, what was originally like a massive advantage for us is now waning. We were super ahead for a while and not as much anymore. Okay, now we're going to delegate again. And infantry. Delegate. Alright, it seems like we don't have that many troops there anymore. Which I'm not sure how I feel about that. But there is not so many that they're getting forced off the walls. Which is something else that like I'd like to see in an update. That you don't just get your troops like crammed off the walls. Because we had that fight. After we took down the Baton Ram and we took down the Siege Tower. This should have been ours. But our guys ended up just getting mashed up. Now their archers are doing a number on us. And our archers really aren't doing much. Which is another thing I'd like to see. With your archers actually going to where they can be helpful. And all being said, being helpful, I think that we probably, if we can get up here, start trying to hit things as they come in. I say what's well, not actually going to get an attack off. Okay, we'll go for the one-handed axe. Okay, we're at the front, so we should be able to get something eventually. Nope, still not getting a hit off at all. Okay, well that's not working for us. But slowly we are clawing this back.
And seeing as it worked last time, um, we can't use anything else. <laughs> How did I hit you? You weren't even close. Okay. We'll try that again without hitting one of our archers because we kind of need them. Yeet. Nah, miles away. That is a lot of troops coming in. Ooh, actually, second group of archers is way over there, right? You guys are there. Actually, some of you are in the fights. We push one ladder down. What I think we do is we actually take them. This is why I like to be able to have smaller groups. Forward, forward, move. And put them in here. And then they should be able to shoot into them. That's the plan. I mean, maybe it works. Kind of hoping it does because we really need all the archers that we can get shooting instead of just stood there doing nothing. But a second ladder is coming up. And our troops are out of position. Which obviously sucks for us. Okay, now they're back. And the Fanes are in as well. Yeah, do not underestimate the Tanian Fanes in close combat. They are fantastic. Brucey the Bowman got taken out. Oh, that's, that's not allowed. Brucey's one of my favourites, you see. It's just such a good name for a bowman. <laughs> oh, Brucey. All right, what's going on? There's some rocks over here. There isn't. And a little bit worrying that we can now run across the wall. Whereas before, we've had to run round. I think that this is definitely one of the closest sieges I've been in. And they have a respectable amount of troops left. Now, these bowmen over here are doing some work. And that's all of them. Okay, we've got 31 troops left. So I've got a feeling uh, that we are going to have to do actually a whole bunch more work if we're going to hold this. Ideally not get hit or hit something. That'd be cool. It's a nice concept. Right, they're routing. Okay, not mad. Five Britannian Fanes. I don't even want to think of how many infantry we lost in that. And you guys... All trained for combat. Close. Very, very, very close. Now, if that siege tower had gone up and stayed up, yeah, that would have been pretty much game for us. Or if that baton ram had come in, that would have been game. But then the other side is we probably lost, I don't know, maybe 100. 100 troops getting knocked off that wall. And there's only, what, like 200 of us? Not really something that we could afford. We lost 11. Two Batanian Fane champions, I can take that. The Sturgeon champions, six. Six of them got wiped out, so we lost a third of our heavy horse. And then Sturgeon Spearmen, uh, we lost uh, a decent chunk of them as well. For mind you, six against everything that was here. Oh, and I forgot about the insane amount of lords that were just going to wipe out. Looks like the Guzate learnt their, their lesson. Oh, unless you're coming in now. You are coming in now. I thought that they were just going to go round and then come back. But yeah, 
Looks like we have a, a second defensive siege. But this time we are building ballistas. I kind of wish there was a way to basically tell your units not to build ballistas. Which I really don't think there is, which is super annoying. No, I want catapults, not ballistas. Ballistas suck. Now it looks like they're going in with the same setup. A battering ram into a siege tower. But this time with no Mangladels to take them out. They are coming in. Unless they try to fight us with trebuchets, then the blisters are actually like super good. And we'll get a whole bunch of engineering from it, which I'm not even mad about. That'll be fine. Alright, that's not really cricket. So we took out that first trebuchet and now they're running away. And that is not a force. 171 horse arches. Not a force that we can fight out in the open. Not even close. Yeah, 172 horse archers and 57 cavalry. Plus 58 archers behind that, that are going to pepper everyone that gets pulled out of position. Right, well, I think that's enough excitement for one episode, so I'm going to bring it to an end here. So thank you very much for watching the Sturgeon Companion Mercenaries. I'll be Gonzi. All your likes, comments, sub support have been amazing. You guys are awesome, and I'll catch you on the next one.